Hi everyone, this is Heather Lottenden from the Flourish Academy. This is episode 472. Today we're talking about confidence, but first, Flourish Academy is a resource for photographers. Make sure you subscribe on YouTube and join our free community group. But if you wanna take your photography to the next level and have access to all of the courses on the Academy site, and coaching for myself as well as the other coaches, check out our membership. So today we're talking about confidence. Do you ever hesitate to either take photos or share your photos because you're not entirely confident in how they look or maybe you want them to look better, they don't look how you'd like them to look or you're concerned with what other people think. I just hear this a lot in the group and I'm, when I'm working one-on-one -on -one with photographers and even teaching my group classes, people tend to hesitate because they're lacking confidence. Well, confidence comes from competence. So the more you learn, the more you know, the more you shoot, the more situations you're presented with, the more competent you become, then you start to feel confident. So how do you get to that? Of course you take classes and you shoot, 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 you shoot all the time. And the number of weddings I've done over this past 16 years, I've, I've never counted, tons of weddings. Every time I found myself in a challenging situation, you know, you always try to avoid it. Like, oh, I'm not sure I'm gonna do this. But after you accomplish it, you feel more confident. Why? Because you gain competence doing something you didn't know how to do, you learned it, you figured it out, whatever it was. I remember early on in my career being deathly afraid of rain at weddings because I thought, you know, my shots are like so good outside with great light, but what am I gonna do if it rains? Um, what if I'm at a less than ideal location? What if I'm forced inside? I don't have confidence in my flash capabilities or at the time I didn't even know how to use an off-camera flash. So I was really lacking in confidence. So I took classes, I practiced, and guess what? I couldn't avoid it. It rained on a wedding day and I had to figure it out. And when I did, again and again and again, I became more competent in that area. So I gained confidence and I was like, yeah, I can do this. It's still not my favorite or ideal. I would prefer to have a beautiful day on a, for a wedding, but if it rains, I can handle it. So competence leads to confidence. That's one aspect of it. But some of you still, still, you have all the competence in the world. You're still not quite sure, what are people gonna think of my photos or, it doesn't look how I want it to look and you're you're just unsure about sharing your work you, you tend to take it very personally because you're an artist I get that let me ask you this question if you were on the beach or at a pool and you were the only person there and there were people swimming and someone started to drown an adult a kid would you stand by and say oh you know what I'm not that strong of a swimmer so I'm just gonna you know, too bad. Okay. Of course not, of course not. You would, whether you could swim or not, you would jump in the water and save that child. Would you, I hope you would. I don't think you would stand by and be like, oh, I'm just not gonna do that. I'm not sure because I don't feel confident enough to do it. Of course not, that's ridiculous. Photography is the same way. It doesn't matter what other people think. If you take photos that you love and you think that they're pretty, whether they're perfect or not, you always wanna improve, of course, then why wouldn't you share them? I mean, then you're depriving people of your gift and your ability to take photos. Actually, I, I wanna reframe this for you. When you say you lack confidence and it holds you back from sharing something, I personally find that to be extremely selfish because you are more worried about protecting yourself and your ego than sharing your work with someone who might need it. Let me give you another example. We had camera club the other evening and everyone got here and we started talking and I said, hey, I have to tell you guys something. Um, you know, our one friend that attends camera club and they were like, oh yeah, I said, she's not here this evening and um, camera club was Tuesday on Monday she had posted on Facebook that she had tragically, unexpectedly lost her son in a horrific accident. I'm talking freak accident that cannot even be explained. He was in his early 20s. Can you imagine? I actually can. My brother died at the age of 26 from a car accident. 
I have been in this position. The first thing people do is say, where are the photos? I need to get the photos. I need to see the photos. It's actually part of the grieving process. Well, when my brother died, I was 19 and I went to look for the photos and we didn't have that many images. I mean, the most recent photo I had with he and I was three years old. He was 26 when he died. I was 19. I decided at that point in my life that would never happen to us again. Never. I was in college to become a mechanical engineer, went on to get a business degree, worked in corporate, but always had a camera in my hands because I swore that would never happen to my family. I became that annoying person at family reunions. It's like, hey, everybody get in the photo. And I'm like, oh, here comes Heather with her camera. I would stand back and I would say, I have a dead brother. Get your in the photo and I'm just taking the photo. I use humor, you guys, to deal with this stuff. Don't take me too seriously. So I would get everybody in the photo and of course they love having all of these photos, right? Because you are not guaranteed tomorrow. It is deadly serious what we do, the legacy we provide. But when you tell yourself or you put it out there that you're not confident and you can't take photos, let me ask you this. This mom who just lost her son, do you think she would take a photo of him even if it were blurry and out of focus? Or maybe it was underexposed and you didn't like the shadows, so you didn't want to share it. But she would take anything she can get her hands on at this point. So the fact that you are withholding that under this guise of you don't have the confidence is extremely self-focused. And you need to get over yourself and take photos and share. You have a gift. You love photography. You take photos. You have a camera. Not everybody has that. Why would you not just take photos of anything and everything and just share all of it, all of it with the world? Because if you're focused on serving others and providing something for someone else, you not for one second would you worry about your confidence. You wouldn't. Because you're thinking, oh, I just want to serve this person. I want to give this person a nice photo. You would not be so self-focused. It is extremely selfish to be worried about what other people are going to think about your photos and you don't have the confidence and oh, so I'm not going to share it. I'm at the point now, especially after this incident with my friend, I have no tolerance for it. I don't want to hear that you're not confident. Just take the photos, share the photos, Take more, get better, focus on your skill set, of course, become more competent, whatever it takes. But if you are not focused on other people and you're focused on yourself, you're going to feel miserable. You're going to be, oh, what are people going to think about me? I don't want to share this. What if somebody says, who does she think she is? Again, my friend would do anything to have a photo of her son that she didn't know existed. He's gone. In fact, I think today might be his funeral. I mean, freak accident in his early 20s. I, I, can, I can't imagine this. I can't. We have been there. And we would do anything for the photos. I don't care how blurry, how out of focus, uh, how poorly composed, or you don't know how to edit. Confidence is important for sure. I'm not downplaying that. You have to feel like you, you can at least take a photo, of course. But if you just for a second shift your focus off of yourself onto serving other people, I mean, it's like me with the Flourish Academy. I wake up every day. How can I serve better? How can I help people? So I put myself out there on live video and I'm pretty sure on a daily basis I make myself look like an idiot. That's easy to do. But I, can't, I don't get hung up on that. Because I think, how can I help someone? I'm focused on you. I'm focused on helping you grow as a photographer. If I was all the time worried about how I was presenting myself or having the perfect material, the perfect lesson plan, I wouldn't do it because I would always be worried about me. <laughs> I want you, of course, improve your photography, work on your competence, which leads to confidence. But I want you to stop thinking about yourself, get over yourself, and start serving others and putting your work out there in a completely unashamed way. It doesn't matter what other people think. It's a legacy. There is a ripple effect for generations and your photos, no matter what you think of them, your photos matter. I'll see you in the next video.